LBP, the TMG. That's Twizel's mad gun. Be positive, Alex Twizel. Let's Come be positive. On. Let's be positive. Be positive, mate. Just stop right there. I will. No negativity. Um, let's be, be positive. positive. LBP, let's be positive. So much to be positive about, Matt. And let's start it off with the Wallabies rewriting the international rugby rankings with a thumping performance, 16-15 in the last second over Scotland. That's all you need, Mark. You only need to be there ahead with a second to go. That's all. Japan would have loved it, and we loved it. But I expect that this is going to be a pretty up and down sort of a tour, Martin. But we take the wins. I always say it. Take the wins, celebrate the wins. See, this is the this is the interesting thing, isn't it? As a Wallaby fan, and Australian rugby is actually celebrating beating Scotland. I think for the first time in Scotland, I don't know since when, since when. Very well, Mick Taggart was playing with Organ Zog and a Rock and a Mammoth and so forth. But we struggle against Japan, and we're down in the dumps about that. Whereas I think if Australia had got out of that match against Japan with perhaps a similar scoreline, you'd probably be celebrating that, wouldn't you? Well, I mean, you've seen us this year. Been pretty good, been very average, been beaten up, come back and played well the next week, but no consistency. None. So, yeah. I mean, look, you know, the one thing you can say about men's rugby this year is that it's been competitive. Yes. It's unlike the other World Cups we're watching at the moment. We're hardly seeing any competition yet. So at least when these teams go on tour, you know, you're not quite sure what you're going to get. And I think sometimes that's a... That's a nice outcome. I mean, you can't tell me that it's not nice to watch other New Zealanders go over and contribute to the Japanese um, upward, upward spiral of rugby, is it? I mean, you know, this is one of the great things about New Zealand rugby is everywhere someone's having success. Yeah, there's a, there's a Kiwi involved. There's normally involved. a Kiwi yeah, involved. True. Very true. You know what I mean? And, 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 and so if you start to send that knowledge around the world, which is what you've got to do, other teams are going to get better. Wouldn't you love to have seen this, this kind of depth at the Women's Rugby World Cup? Oh, you would. You would. And look, despite I mean, what... you would, wouldn't you? Despite what the and mess- it's a growing game. It's a growing game, but it's going to take a long time, years, decades, decades and decades, before we really have a competitive women's yes, a game. a proper competitive women's game. And so rather than just, just get suffocated by this saturation... And I think it's all disingenuous coverage from the New Zealand sports media who are just so desperate to create a story every day about the Women's World Cup. Matt, I think it's patronising, it's demeaning and it's belittling is what it is. No true sports fan does not know what they are watching. There were four quarterfinals in the Women's World Cup over the weekend and the average score was 42-6. They were blowouts the goddamn lot. But that's okay. We all knew that the tournament was about three games, two semifinals and a final. I don't mind that. But instead, this absolute desperation to outwoke the opposition by... Look, the worst story I saw all week was the one about the toggles or the hair ties or something like that. Would they ever write a story about the All Blacks and the headbands that they wear? It's patronising is what it is. The story you refer to... I read the story you refer to, and 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 this is where... They are doing a disservice to the competition. Oh, I believe so. Um, Scrunchies, the real MVP of this Rugby World oh, Cup. See, for God's now sake. we're talking about these. They're talking about these elastics that get covered with a, a piece of silk or something. Like they're all over my house. Scrunchies everywhere. Yeah. You know, um, you put your hair up in a ponytail or whatever else. And I and I thought to myself, this is the dumbest story to try and bring along women's rugby that I've ever heard. This is the worst one of the entire tournament so far. If a man had written that, if a man had written that... The variety is bedazzling. Yeah, I mean, honestly, if a guy had written that prior to the tournament, he would be castigated and cancelled. I mean, surely there's got to be one of these players or coaches who steps up and says, enough of this tripe. Where's the article that says, comparing the Welsh Ford Pack to the New Zealand Ford Pack, analyse it like you would a man's game. Stop looking for these fairy stories which aren't there, which you're trying to make up to cover inches because your editor said we need a story every day. I honestly think, mate, it's... At least one. It's belittling is what it is. You're not treating the athletes like athletes. It's true, Well, what does it say? What does it it even mean? It says it's Mickey Mouse and bubblegum is what it says. That's what you're actually saying. You know? You're not actually respecting the fact that there's a game going on. That's what you're not respecting. 
They've got to keep the hair out of their eyes. We get that. Yeah. That's not a story about no. the World Cup, though. Okay, how many stories? Let me yeah. ask you this. I appreciate there's long-haired men. How there's many, long-haired men, How Martin. many stories have, have, huh? have stuff written about Paul Cole, world squash champion, and the headband he wears to keep the hair out of his eyes? How many stories have they written, yeah. apart from none? Well, you, you just wouldn't dare go there. There's too much else to analyse. Now, I'm not sure why they feel that that's not worthy. I mean, I suppose there's been a little bit of it. But if you've got decent stories, surely you damage the overall coverage with one about scrunchies. It can't just be me. No, no, mate. Like, you know, um, I said last week or the week before, just let it play out. Yeah, let it just be what it is. Let people start to enjoy the game. that's it. Let it build and grow. But don't try and make it something it's not. Let's look at the yeah, T20. Yeah, like, take, your, take your mind back to the first Men's Rugby World Cup. What did people expect? You know, how was the tournament covered? It was an amateur tournament, Did we mate. expect it would be the best tournament ever? No. Has it got better? Yes. Has it been run better? Yes. Are the well, teams and, and more that's, competitive? And that's, and that's yes. the starting point, isn't yeah. it? Well, of course. Look, uh, let's, look, let's look at the T20 World Cup because the rugby league is, to me, the same as the women's. It starts this weekend with the quarterfinals. The T20 World Cup, though, now, this is the equation that we're facing here in New Zealand. If we beat the Poms and knock them out, we knock them out, which means you go through. You see, now, I don't like that. I would rather that we bellied it, bottled it, gave them the win, and then it comes down to run weight with you. I know that that's, that's underarm, Matt. That's sandpaper, I know. It's not something we're used to in this country, but you'd understand our reasoning, surely. Let's be positive. Well, I think that that's absolutely right. It's tournament play. Isn't it? Yeah. So if you strategically need to play a certain way and not particularly play well, and you do lose, and it puts you in a better position due to rained out matches, well, why wouldn't you consider it? I don't think it's underarm at all, and I'm not sure that there's a rule that says that you shouldn't consider that uh, within context. You know, that Australia-England game being rained out has created this situation. Yeah. That's not normal, is it? There's actually, I'll go back to 1999. You know, we've both been beaten once. I'll go back to 1999. Us by you, then by Ireland. I remember we beat... Then a, we get rained out. We beat Australia and Cardiff. The game that was really crucial, wasn't it? That was a crucial game to be played. Yeah, we, we, beat, Cardiff, we beat Australia and Cardiff in 1999. And I think it came down to it in the end. There was a go slow, I think, Steve Wall's side against Scotland, something like that, where they deliberately went to affect the run rates and things to try and knock us out. Now, I think this is a valid way of looking at it, isn't it? I'm not saying we deliberately go and lose to England, but if we lose to England, I wouldn't be that fussed. Because we're still in the semis regardless. All we've got to do is beat Ireland. Well, you've done what you need to do. Yeah. And that amazing first-up performance against Australia to spank them, that set you up. From there on in, you really had to make it, didn't you? Yeah. And so you're in a box position. Why, Why wouldn't you? I mean, the question is, is do you think that if Australia make the semis, that's a better thing than England? Because you're thinking about your own outcome as a team. That's what we're doing. And, I mean, no-one's asking them to cheat. No. See, I'd actually you know, select, and, I'd just select some different players. If you decide to go out there and try and um, uh, 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 make your run rate look good, well, you could be bowled out for a, a low total, couldn't you? Yeah. We, just, we thought we'd go out there and try and get some batting practice and try and put ourselves under pressure. Yes. Didn't pay off. Didn't pay off. England win. They remain in the tournament. Aussies out. Oh, Wouldn't be that hard to... Uh, how good would that be? Hey. How good that be? How well, would I don't think it'd be that good. How good would that be? I don't you think it'd be that good. I you think go we're in your for own a real show if we your make own the country. Semis. How nasty would you get? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, being at home like that, yeah, you'd be furious. Yeah. i tell you what I also love. One of the things that's come up with this uh, 2020 World Cup, T20 World Cup, whatever, is the, um, the idea that they wouldn't try and use an enclosed roof. Yeah, brilliant. Eh? When a game looks like it's going to be rained out. Now I thought to myself, well, y- you have to, you have to schedule it in the roofed venue. You can't just, you can't wait for it to rain and then move it. No, no, can no, you? No, no, no. You know what I mean? I thought the coverage of it was quite. Everyone's criticising, and it's a dumb move, and they should have done this and that. Well, I mean, maybe they couldn't afford it. You know, maybe, the, maybe, maybe the costs of the closed stadium for another three games makes it tenuous. You don't know anyone's going to go. If the cost is too much, you put it on at a certain ground, it gets rained out. So, That's totally, cricket. Totally, look, it's totally the same, mate, happened with 660 in Wellington. Um, on Saturday night, the, cancel, the, the concert got postponed and moved to Sunday because they couldn't close the roof. Oh, that's right. 
Oh, shit. That's right. They didn't. Oh, oh that's, that's right. right. Mm. In Eden, you're thinking about, which is yeah. always close. Yeah, there you go. 660, oh, there would have been some devastated people on Saturday night. Who wants to go to a concert on Sunday? Well, the other thing was 660 should have been lambasted for the fact that they scheduled that concert to clash with the Black Ferns. I mean, if there's nothing more sexist, pig, misogynist than that, I don't know. I really don't. Well, have they not been reading the uh, Stuff website <laughs> and the New Zealand Herald website? Yeah. Do they not know about the scrunchies? Exactly. Do they know, not know about the willingness that New Zealand has to now jump on board and fill those stadiums. You know, I heard a little survey this morning on another radio station and 71% of people at the moment said during that survey they were more interested in the uh, the women's rugby than the men's. C oh, can you believe that? Oh, for God's sake. Really? I mean, come on. Just, okay, I'm ending it. I'm, 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 I'm ending it there because I want to remain positive. Matt Gunn, really? What, just, you're reading Ella Soper's Twitter page. Is that how it works? Thank you so much for that. We will come back. With what is called, Alice Sober, by the way, does great work. Alice Sober is a one-woman publicity machine for the Rugby Women's World Cup, and I admire it. I don't, I don't buy or believe half the stuff, but I admire it. Why the hell? If you love it that much and you're on your high horse and you're on your soapbox and you're trumpeting like that, why the hell not? He did that on purpose, Of course he bloody did.